Alright, so I happen to know that on minor triads, which is the first chord that you play, C sharp minor, I happen to know that the third of a minor triad, when it's played as the highest voice, is in the most dramatic, is the most dramatic pitch that you can play over a minor triad. I just happen to have that memorized. Alright? It's the most feminine sounding. It's, it's similar to the major seventh that you can play over a major triad. If that seventh is high enough, it's going to sound real lush. It's in a weak position, but it's, it's very, a uh, lot of emotion to it, a lot, lot of sensitive emotion to it, okay? In minor triads, the third is, has that maximum feeling that way, all right? It's going to be the most dramatic pitch I can play over that chord. And I also know that when we're talking about the first chord, the one chord in a minor key, that's even more true than when we're playing on the four chord of a minor key. I just, all this stuff is just memorized from years of playing. Okay? So if I want the absolute maximum milking every ounce of emotion that I can get, using one note, that's the note I'm going to play, okay? And I also know that if I set that note up by playing the fifth below it, that it will, it will enhance that dramatic emotional feeling, all right? So in this case, the fifth of the first chord, the chord is C-sharp minor, the fifth is a G-sharp note, and the third is E. And I'll be certain to play the E higher in pitch range than any of the notes that he's playing, okay? Right, so I'm going to choose this G sharp here, and I'm going to play that note E here. Now, I also know that if I approach that E note from a half step below and bend up into that E note, it's going to sound even more dramatic. And I also know that if I bend up to that note from a half step below, to the E note, to the third, and delay the vibrato, bend up, not hit vibrato right away, and then hit the note again and apply the vibrato, it's absolutely the most maximum dramatic thing I can do with one note on the guitar over a minor chord in a minor key. Okay? Set up, I'm going to set up this note from this note, bend from a half step below, bend up, delay the vibrato, hit the note again, use vibrato on a bent note. So that's much stronger than just doing this. That's the root of the C sharp minor chord. That's very stable, it's, it's a stronger note than the E, than the third, because it's, it's more firm in the chord, it's the root of the, of the chord. But it's less dramatic, it has less passion in it than the third does. Okay? So I'll go from, just play that note. Note sounds perfectly fine, but doesn't have the drama that this has. difference in feel. The way that feels is totally different than if I just hit the root or if I just hit the fifth. Even the fifth with vibrato is not as strong. So that's one example. I'll give you another example. If I play, if I manipulate the half steps around the consonant pitches, I know that's going to create a lot of tension. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll play a little, I'll play a little C sharp minor arpeggio, 
And when I get to the top of it, I'll end up on the fifth, because there's a half step right above the fifth, uh, then from G sharp to A. And then I'll come down the arpeggio and I'll end up on the ninth, which is, excuse me, which is a half step below the third. Okay? So here's the basic arpeggio I'm gonna play. So what I'm gonna do, here's the half step above. Okay? Half step below the third, I'm going to play it down here. The, the note didn't sound good because I played it over the A chord instead of over the C sharp. Play it again. Now there, I had to resolve. I had to resolve the ninth because the chord was about to change, and I knew in advance that that that. Um, this D sharp note is not going to sound as good over the A chord, which is six in this game. So now he's on A, and I need to get off that D sharp. I played before because we're resolving going three, two, one. So we're going to the root of that chord, the root of the key. Okay. Now I can make this more dramatic by when I by connecting these two pitches, the two and the one, by playing the note in the middle, which is totally illegal note, out of key. But I'm going to bend this note from here. It's going to be a ghost bend. So I'm, going to bend I'm going to bend it without playing it to come down. So instead of going a step from two to one, I'm, the, the note in the middle, the flat two, will be bent, pre-bent, and then I can go down. And it will make the transition from two to one very dramatic and very smooth, very lyrical. It'll sound like a singer was singing those two notes because the natural way to sing it wouldn't, unless you're singing, you know, strict step-by-step -step classical stuff, wouldn't be to, you know, sing uh, D sharp and then to sing C sharp and kind of let that D sharp fall down if you wanted to make it more dramatic. We can do, we can mimic that on the guitar. This does that sound more lyrical way a singer would sing it? Verse, here's the, here's this way. Right? This is what it sounds like on a piano. This is what it sounds like from a singer. Okay. So if I want to get a more lyrical quality, I will take a pitch. Well, if I want to make a go ahead, you can stop for a second. If I want it to sound more lyrical like a singer. If I know that I have two notes that are adjacent to each other, I'm going to go down from two to one, or from five to four, or from four to three, anywhere where there's a whole step. I can smooth out, I can, I can make that transition much smoother by going to the illegal note, the one out of the key, bending up to the pitch that is in key, hitting that note here, and then releasing the bend, and then going to the final note. It's much, much more lyrical. 